Hello again, this is Al K0CN with another Flex Radio video. And in this session, I'd like to talk about noise mitigation, noise control features available through Smart SDR and the Flex 6000 series signature radios. I'll be using my Flex 6500 and Smart SDR version 1.10. I would encourage you to consult the Flex 6000 Signature Series Smart SDR Software User Manual, Section 11, for additional specific information and for periodic updates. Noise mitigation includes a number of hardware and software features available through the Flex Radio. Specifically, I'll be talking about the AGCT adjustment the digital signal processing or digital signal features such as the wideband noise blanker, the slice specific noise blanker, the automatic notch filter, and the tunable notch filter. As ham radio operators, we all live in a world of noise that sometimes makes communicating via radio difficult. The Flex 6000 series radio has several digital signal processing functions that enhance reception in the presence of noise. The first is the automatic gain control. The automatic gain control automatically adjusts the audio gain or volume based on the strength of the signals present in the passband of the receiver. The goal of the AGC is to amplify weak signals and attenuate strong signals for more comfortable listening. The AGC can be adjusted in two ways. The first is a threshold adjustment, and the second is the release speed control. The AGC threshold is adjusted using a slider on the RX panel. The goal is to set the AGC threshold control to a point where the AGC does not apply gain to the noise, but will amplify the signals just above the noise level. To set the AGC, tune to a spot on the band where there is no signal and move the AGCT slider to its far right, or 100%. Next, slowly move the threshold slider to the left, lower gain values, until you start to hear a reduction in the background noise level. This will be a point where the AGC threshold is just starting to move out of the noise floor. Continuing to move the slider left will further reduce the background noise as the threshold moves further above the noise level. I find that a setting in the range of 55 to 65 is typical for my station. If the AGCT value is set to less than 50, it may be necessary to compensate for the loss in volume by increasing the slice receiver or master audio frequency gain to a higher level. The second AGC setting is the release control. The AGC release control is found in a drop-down box on the RX panel. It can be set to fast, medium, slow, or off. These settings control the time it takes for the AGC to recover after it attenuates a strong signal. Typically, a slow release works best for strong signals where the noise floor is stable. A fast release might be best for pulling a weak CW signal out of the noise. The medium setting is a compromise between fast and slow. In all cases, the AGC release works best with a properly adjusted AGC threshold and will help you hear both weak and strong signals with the minimum of AF gain adjustment. Next, let's look at the noise blanker. The noise blanker is a tool used to reduce pulse type fast rise time noise, such as power line hash and ignition noise. The Flex Radio offers two noise blanker options. The first is the wideband noise blanker, WNB, and the second is the slice specific noise blanker, NV. The wideband noise blanker controls are found in the ANT button and the receiver flag. The wideband noise blanker has an on off button and a threshold control. When turned on, the threshold control is used to match the characteristics of the noise encountered. Strong signals in both the receive passband and around it can cause distorted audio if the wideband noise blanker threshold control is set too high. Therefore, the threshold should be set to reduce the noise with a minimum of audio distortion. 
The wideband noise blinker operates at a spectral capture unit level, and therefore all pan adapters and slice receivers attached to that SCU will share the same threshold setting. The slice specific noise blinker, NB, operates at the slice receiver level. In other words, each slice receiver has its own noise blinker. As you recall, the Flex 6300 can have two slice receivers, the 6500 can have four, and the 6700 can have eight. The controls for the noise blinker are found in the flag of each slice receiver and on the RX panel. Each noise blinker has an on-off control and a threshold control. The threshold control adjusts the level at which a sample is considered to be an impulse noise. The threshold should be adjusted for maximum effect on the noise with the minimum of audio distortion. Typically, the lowest threshold level setting that is effective for noise suppression should be used. Unlike the wideband noise blanker, the noise blanker only uses 24 kHz of the RF spectrum centered on the received frequency, so the effect of using the noise blanker may be different from that of the wideband noise blanker. The algorithms used for the two noise blankers can complement each other or they may be used independently. I live in a quiet area with very little electrical hash or ignition noise. However, I was able to record an electrical noise on 20 meters to demonstrate the use of the noise blanker as seen here. When I turn on the slice specific noise blanker with the threshold set at 100, the 3S unit noise was reduced by about 1S unit. The wideband noise blanker had no effect on this particular noise. Finally, with regards to the noise blanker, I should mention that the wideband and the slice specific noise blankers are not intended to reduce or remove atmospheric noise. Next, we'll look at the noise reduction processor, NR. This control is used to reduce random white noise, making signals more readable. The controls for the noise reduction processor are found in the flag under the DSP tab and on the RX panel. In practice, the AGC threshold should be adjusted first, then the noise reduction control should be enabled. The threshold control is adjusted and set for the optimal trade-off between signal-to-noise ratio and the minimal distortion of the desired signal. You may find this control useful in listening to weak signals buried in the noise. The Automatic Notch Filter, or ANF, is an algorithm-based adaptive filter. The filter has an on-off control and a threshold control. The ANF cancels out constant tones and is used in phone modes. The threshold controls the adaption rate of the filter. In practice, when receiving a phone signal and when a constant tone appears, you can enable the ANF filter and the tone should be canceled out. The threshold can be adjusted for best tone cancellation and a minimum of audio distortion. The next filter is the Tracking Notch Filter, or TNF. The Tracking Notch Filter is used to remove or notch out objectionable carriers encountered during single sideband transmissions. The controls to create the TNF include the plus TNF button on the pan adapter, or by right-clicking the mouse on the pan adapter where the filter is desired. The notch filter will appear as a greenish-yellow vertical line on the pan adapter frequency where the filter is created. If you hover your mouse pointer over the yellow line, you'll see a status box showing the filter's exact frequency and the filter width. While hovering, your cursor will change to a four-arrow pointer, indicating you can move the filter by dragging it left or right to a desired frequency, or you can change the filter width by moving the pointer up and down. When a signal is notched out in Smart SDR, the filter remains on that frequency even if you change the frequency of the receiver. On many other receivers, the notch filter frequency will move as you change the receive frequency, uncovering the notched signal. The filters can be temporary or may be remembered permanently to deal with persistent, troublesome carriers. In Smart SDR, you can create as many notch filters as you like to remove local problem carriers or birdies across the band. 
All tunable notch filters can be turned on or off at one time by clicking on the TNF icon on the bottom bar of the Smart SDR window. Finally, adjustments can be made to the tracking notch filter by placing the mouse pointer on the filter line and right clicking. An option box will appear allowing you to delete the TNF, remember the TNF, by the way a second click of this button will erase the filter from memory, make the filter deep, useful for strong signals, make the filter very deep, or return the filter to normal. The final filter I'll discuss is the Automatic Peaking Filter, or APF. This filter is available while in CW mode. This filter will apply small amounts of amplification to a narrow portion of the band to help lift a CW signal without amplifying the adjacent frequencies. This can be useful when trying to copy weak CW signals. The controls are available on the receiver flag under the DSP tab. The controls include an on-off button, and a slider which will adjust the filter bandwidth. An on-off button for the APF is also located on the RX panel. Well, I think this is a good point to bring this video to a close. I think the noise management capabilities of the Flex Radio are quite impressive, especially as I look back over the years at some of the receivers I've owned. So with that, I'll wish you all good luck, good DX, and 7.3 from Al, K0CN. Thanks for watching.